Alright guys, I've really struggled with this lesson. We're going to do a lesson on communion. Um, there's two parts of communion. One is the part of remembrance. And the other is a part of self-examination. The first, there's, it's found two places in the scripture. It's Luke 21, chapter 21, verses 17 through 20. And we'll get to that in a minute. Let's, let's open with prayer. Dearly Father, as we go through this lesson, help us to understand it, Father. Help us to do it in a proper reverence, Father. Give us guidance and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. In Luke chapter 21, verse 17, he, he talks about he takes, he, taking the cup and about drinking the wine. It's almost an exact repeat of what we're going to read. And we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Wait a minute, we're not supposed to start with the body. I'm starting the wrong verse. Don't stop it. Yeah, starting with twenty four. And, and he, but we'll go up to 23 for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he had he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup in the new covenant. In my blood, this do also as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Okay, it's about remembrance. God has a lot of things set up for us so that we do it multiple times for remembrance. When the Jews were set free from Egypt and he parted the waters and they walked across on dry land, he had each person of the 12 tribes of Judah get a stone and stack it to remember what had happened. Because it wasn't but a couple days later when they got to the land it was promised them and 12 spies went in and only two of them said we can take it. After he had opened up the Red Sea they walked across on dry land it wasn't but days later they forgot. And they had to go around the desert for 40 years. I'm sure they passed those stones many times in those 40 years. And remembered. Yeah, but he did open up the Red Sea. See, God had to prepare them to believe what he was saying. In the in the Jewish tradition, they have the holy days, and those are to remember what God said he was going to do and what God has done. There are many young people today that celebrate the 4th of July. 
but they don't know what they're celebrating because it's called Fourth of July now. It's not called Independence Day. See, we have to have reminders because human nature is to forget. That's why it says, if you forget history, it will repeat itself. We need reminders. That's why we have holidays, to remind us. And that's what part of having communion is. It's to remind us what Jesus did, what Jesus went through to purchase forgiveness of our sins so that we could have or be reunited with the Father and walk in covenant. It is really important that we walk in covenant because God desires, that is God's desire for us. His desire is to have communication with us, to meet with us. And that's called covenant. Now we're going to move on down in the same chapter and same the same one. 1 Corinthians 11, and we're going to jump down to 24. No, we were, we read 24 already. We're jumping down to 27. I'm sorry. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner. What's unworthy manner? We're going to go into that. Will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let him a man examine himself you're to examine yourself you're to say okay am I walking right with God have I been forgiven of my sins have I asked for forgiveness and have I turned from my evil ways because forgiveness is not only asking but there's an action that goes with it you have to turn from you must do an about face and stop doing what it is which yeah, whatever sin it is that's been coming to coming on you. And so let him eat of the bread of and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. So there's a consequence for just thinking that, oh, I'm just going to do this half, half-heartedly. No, you can't do it half-heartedly. You can't do it just because everybody's looking at you. Or because you think it's expected of you you have to do it after careful examination For this reason, many weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For we, for if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are 
chasten, chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. So, when we're going into communion on Sundays, we need to do it in reverence. We need to remember what Jesus did to get us back in relationship with God. We have to self-examine ourselves and find out, okay, am I right with God? And if I'm not right with God, I have to get right with God before I take communion. So, on Sundays when we're doing communion and the pastor gives that brief time in between of basically a time of silence, that is when you're supposed to be doing self-examination. Where am I in standing with God? Because there's a lot of benefits that come with taking communion. It's a time of cleansing. But it's also a time of remembrance. It's a time of reflection. It's a time of purification. So, let's not take it without knowing why we're doing it and knowing where we where we stand all right that's all i've got for this week let's let's pray dear heavenly father let us remember what jesus christ did on the cross the stripes that he took for our sins the blood that he shed father god let us do self-examination, Father. Father, let us know that we are right with you, that we are in right standing, Father God, and that we will not be judged in the final judgment with the world because we made sure that we had it right with you. We give you praise and glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.